Hey there, welcome. Alan Simpson here. This is a quickie video on putting uh, Google Maps in your web pages. We'll make them responsive so they fit well on any screen. Uh, you just need to start with a new, if you already have your web page open in your editor, I'll start with a blank one here. And there's nothing special about the basic tags, it's just your standard run of the mill HTML page. But where you want to put the map is somewhere between the body and closing body tags, get the cursor there, go out to maps.google.com and then enter the address of the location you want to show on a map and it can pretty much just need the uh, the street address and then the city, maybe the state and the zip or in the country perhaps, whatever it takes to zero in on the exact location and when the map looks right like it, it got the right place um, you want to click this uh, share icon here and choose embed a map then you can choose a size I would say go with the large size because we're gonna make it responsive so that it fits on any screen so this would be like the max size click a Choose large and then click copy HTML and then paste that code right in between the opening and closing body tags. Then to test to make sure you got it right, go ahead and save that page and open it in any web browser. And if you see the map, you know you got it. Okay. And that's it in terms of embedding the map. Now, as far as the responsiveness goes in the sense of making it scale to the width of the screen so it looks good on uh, large screens as well as smaller screens. We're going to need a little CSS code. I'm going to put it right in the page here so it's all in one file. And the selector will be iframe because that map is in an iframe. And to keep it from getting enormous, I'm going to give it a max width of 800 pixels and a max height of 600 pixels which is the default size for the larger map. Um, I want to take out that fixed width and height and then in my CSS I'm going to make it a percentage width. Only well, I'm going to use VW rather than percent because that way I can also calculate a height. So back in my iframe style rule I'll first say display block which allows me to apply width and height to it. And then the width, I'll say, is 90 VW, which means 90% of the viewport width, 90% of the browser window width. Now, since I put a max width on it, it won't go any wider than 800 pixels. But if I narrow this down to, like, phone screen width, you can see it gets narrower and narrower and still stays within the width of the window. The only problem is the shape is wrong now. It's more square than that. So to get the height right, I'm going to have to set the height. And that's going to be a percentage of the width. The exact percentage will be, uh, let me open up a calculator, and I'll just say I'll put in the max width, which is 600, and divide that by 800 equals 0.75. So that tells me the height is 75% though of the width. So I'll say the height colon calc open paren 0.75 times asterisk and then 90 VW. Make sure that VW number you put in the second line here matches the one in the width. So in other words, if you want the width to only be 50% the width of the screen, then both numbers would be 50 VW. So now we can save our work and go check it out in the web browser, see how it looks. Now it's the original shape, and as I narrow the window, it maintains its shape, but still fits within the window, so it works well on phones as well as wider screens without getting ridiculously large. All right, now how you style it from there is entirely up to you. That's basically it for in terms of making it responsive. If you want to center it, you can set the margin to some value for top and bottom and uh, auto for the sides, and that'll 
keep it centered. If you want to put a border around it, you can use the usual CSS code for that sort of thing. Maybe you put a subtle little drop shadow on it so you can see the edges even better. But again, this is strictly optional. There's nothing required about this kind of styling. So that raises it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, actually, I might make that outer border a little bit thicker. Two pixels, perhaps. But again, you know, just style it to your own taste. Well, it's a little hard to see in the video here, but I can see it when I look on my own screen. Okay. So uh, you want to round the corners a little bit. We can use a little border radius on it. Uh, four pixels, say. Keep it subtle. And you have a little slight rounding on the corners there, but it's still responsive and stays centered. Okay. Now, if you want to uh, put some text below it or next to it or whatever, you could actually put it right under the iframe tag. So I'll say, we're in the Empire State Building. Stop by any time. All right, I misspelled stop, but oh well, you get the idea. So now that text is um, below the map. Okay, I'm working on a really small screen area, so yours will probably look different. And of course, you can still design the rest of the page however you like. For the body element, maybe change the background and foreground color and the uh, text size. That won't affect the map, but it'll affect everything outside of the map. So now I've made the text larger and the background black. Okay. It doesn't affect the responsiveness at all. Now if you want that text to be next to the map, instead of margin 1EM auto, you'd say something like float left. Now it will only work when it, there's actually room for it to fit there. Actually, it, we don't want it smashed up against the map like that. So we'll put a right margin on the iframe, give a little extra space there. Okay, but again, this is just style to taste, whatever works for you, however you want it to look, it's entirely up to you. Okay, now if you're watching this on YouTube, go down to the description area to get a link to the code so you don't have to retype all that code. And with that, I'll say thanks for watching. And I hope to see you around the net. All right. Bye-bye now.